On the news this morning, Bishop Ezel for Ragota Diocese charges Christians to remain focused in God. Ashia MD Onyemechi threatens to sanction health facilities defaulting on service delivery to release. India and Nigeria synergize to promote the millet value chain. ECOWAS speaker Tunis calls on parliamentarians to promote policies to end dependency. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Ibo values. Let's give him maximum support for the tax ahead. Good morning. Welcome to the news. My name is Chidema Oranwa. The Anglican Bishop of Agwata Diocese, Right Reverend Samuel Ezofo, has charged Christians to always focus on how to inherit the kingdom of God, in addition to giving good testimonies about Jesus Christ. In his sermon at the Cathedral Church of St. John Ecolobia in Agwata local government area, during a rededication service for members of Agwata Diocese and Men's Fellowship and Women's Ministry, Bishop Ezofo reminded the faithful to always anchor their faith and belief in God, despite doubts and challenges challenges they are passing through. Joseph Ebocha was there and report. Bishop Ezofo, who maintained that salvation only comes from God, cautioned Christian against converting the church into a marketplace, stressing the need for the sanctity of the church to be maintained as the only place where powers are received through prayers. He cautioned Christians against hatred, backbiting, among others, reminding them that God doesn't bless an unrighteous individual. Bishop Ezofo, who is also the national chairman of the Evangelical Fellowship in the Anglican Communion, EFAC, Nigeria, urged members of the Anglican Men's Fellowship and the Women's ministry to surrender their lives totally to God in order to continue to receive his favor, blessings and mercy. Jesus can even go see him and everyone that can even go see him go inside or say that on the Kabbalah is it. Hallelujah. Only the ultimate and absolute surrender, unconditional surrender. In an interview, the president of Agwata Diocese Women's Ministry, Mrs. Shinyere Ezofo, charged those that participated in the rededication service not to see it as a mere ceremony, but to see the event as one that would draw them closer to God, calling on them to always be change agents. She also called on the youth and all eligible voters to use the forthcoming elections to enthrone effective leadership in Nigeria. It's better for us to put away everything that is not holy and righteous for our lives. So that as we really dedicate our lives to the service of the Lord, God will accept our lives and then accept our services. In a remark, the administrator, Cathedral Church of St. John, Ekulobia, Venerable Ifan Chuku Obueli, who called on Christians to use their individual destinies in working out their salvation, cautioned them against amalgamating their faith with idolatry. Just being a church goer and having our minds set on different things, but we need to set our minds on things above, where Jesus is, and from there we'll receive the grace to function here on earth. The service, which featured a special anthem by the Aguata Diocese and Women's Ministry, provided a platform for series of prayers for those in leadership positions, the church, Anambra State, and Nigeria. From the Cathedral Church of St. John, Ekulobia, Joseph Ebocha reporting for ABS News. Christians have been cautioned against entering into any covenant that will retard their progress. An evangelist, Mr. Albert Chukwemeka, who gave the advice and admission during a service at St. Peter's Parish, Amobia, in Oka South, local government area, warned Christians against entering into any covenant that has no clear definition and vision. The evangelist Chukwemeka stressed the need for the children of God to enter into serious covenant with their creator for them to continue to record successes and addition to inherit in the kingdom of God. Evangelist Chukwemeka, who blamed series of problems many families are passing through on the covenant their forefathers entered, cautioned the faithful against bringing in evil covenants in their various homes. He called on Nigerians to have absolute faith in God despite the challenges they are fast facing, especially in security and bad economic policies, reminding them that every problem has an aspiring date. The service featured a series of prayers for the smooth conduct of next month's general elections. 
The Managing Director of Adambra State Health Insurance Agency, Dr. Simeon Onyemechi, says the agency will not hesitate to sanction any implementing medical facility that default in the discharge of its duties. Speaking with ABS Health Correspondent Chibuzo Koye in Oka, Dr. Um, Onyemechi noted that Governor Chukwu Mr. Ludo is very passionate about the health needs of Indianembra and all the residents of the state, and as such, Asia will sanction any of their health facilities that fails to efficiently attend to their in release. The ASHA Managing Director commended Governor Saludo for the recent recruitment of over 300 health personnel in the state to enhance the state's health sector, describing it as a step in the right direction. According to Dr. Nyemechi, Governor Saludo has provided all the enabling environment which has made the agency a reference point in terms of health insurance in Nigeria and urged Indianembra to embrace the scheme. The ASHA boss urged politicians and affluent individuals in the society to use the adoption model system to register more people, especially the poor and vulnerable, into the scheme for them to avoid out-of-pocket expenses. The candidate of uh, the All Progressive Grand Alliance, Abgefu, an Ember Central Senatorial District, in next month's general election, Honorable Dossier Nwanko has urged the electorate to always ask questions to various uh, candidates of political parties who come to seek their votes in order to assess their competence and hold them accountable to their promises. The Abge candidate, who is currently representing Njikoka Anocha and Dunukofe Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives, the call when his campaign team visited Idani, Uke, Abatete, Ojoto, Oba, and Nobi in Idembele North and South local government areas. Correspondent Chibuzo Obidike reports. Who pointed out that the era of manipulating the electorate through opinion leaders who are respected in the communities is gone, challenged voters to always insist on developmental projects that will be beneficial to them for years to come. He told the gathering that with their permanent voters card, they stand a chance to challenge, decide and produce quality leaders that will drive the future of the district. He recounted his achievements as federal lawmaker and philanthropist, stating that he has laid a quality foundation at the House of Representatives which he hopes to consolidate on at the Senate if elected. <laughs> If I get a Buga, which I declare, no one has a good time. The guy got pushed along, why is Janine and Aboja? What about the time for Waka and Ucha who won your four room? For Mr. Iken Na Iyebu, the APGA candidate for Idemili North and South Federal constituency, his interest is to invest and give his constituency better opportunity at development through progressive legislations and described Honorable Wankwo as an individual who shares his vision of sustainable development. <laughs> The Commissioner for Culture, Tourism and Entertainment, Mr. Don Onyenji, revealed that the apuga led administration in the state is backing all the candidates of the party, asking the people to support APGA candidates during the forthcoming general elections. House of Assembly, National Assembly, both House of Reps and Senate. In Jesus' name. 
The Transition Committee Chairman of Idemili North Local Government Area, Mrs. Amakobi, and the stakeholder, Lady Vera Okonkwo, said that women are happy with the candidates, asking them to go home with the assurance that the women and youth of the area are solidly behind them. The President General of Idani, Dr. Dozie Ideolise, and stakeholder in the community, Engineer Chisomu Wezuke, commended the choice of candidates who have track records of performance by APGA. The deputy chairman of APGA in Anambra State, Mr. Tony Omeli Gwele, during the tour, inducted new members into the party who were from other political parties. On arrival at the different communities, the federal lawmaker paid courtesy visits to the traditional rulers of the towns, including Igwe Chuma Abwala of Uke, Igwe Alfred Efobi of Abatete, Igwe Moodum Obi of Nobi, Igwe General Mba Malo of Ojoto, and the regent of Oba, Prince Noel Ezenwa, to seek their royal blessings and prayers. The traditional ruler of Ojoto, Igwe Gerard Mbamalo, and the regent of Oba, Prince Noel Ezenwa, in their different speeches blamed the bane of the Nigerian nation on bad leadership. And on the foreign scene, India and Nigeria say they are willing and ready to take their millet initiatives to the next level following the recognition of millet by the United Nations UN as the king of crops. Hence, it pronounced the year 2023 as the year of millets. Celebrating the day in Abuja, the High Commission of India in collaboration with the Niger State as part of Nigeria Millet's initiative brought together members of the Indian community, Nigerian dignitaries, or high-level Indian and Nigerian representatives from the agricultural sector as per promotion council, the traditional institution among others. Princess Ekiyaji tells us more. Well, it was an infusion of culture and culinary arts at the International Day of Millet 2023, tagged Millet's Food Festival and Cooking Competition as several cultural performances from Niger State artists and the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture thrilled the guests, while the aroma from a cooking contest showcasing the various dishes that could be made with millet filled the air. Addressing the assemblage, the High Commissioner of India to Nigeria, Sherry Balasubaramanian noted that the International Year of Millets, which came into being after India proposed it and was supported by over 70 nations, including Nigeria, at the United Nations General Assembly, will provide a unique opportunity to increase global production, ensure efficient processing and consumption, promote a better utilization of crop rotations, and encourage better connectivity throughout food systems to promote millets as a key component of the food basket. He stressed that millets are among the first plants to be domesticated and are considered nutri cereals due to their high nutritional content and have served as a traditional staple for hundreds of millions of people in sub-Saharan Africa and Asia for 7,000 years and are now cultivated across the world. This would also provide a lot of employment to farmers and increase their uh, income. So this is a great initiative on behalf of our two countries and recognized by the United Nations. In his speech, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Dr. Mohammed Abubakar, represented by a director in the ministry, Engineer Abubakar Abdullahi, said Nigeria's Ministry of Agriculture is doing everything possible to ensure it meets the target of producing 4.2 million tons of millets annually through research and development. He said they have realized the importance of millet value chain and are encouraging smallholder farmers to engage in millet production because of the various positive outcomes in form of value chain. We are going to learn from each other and we are going to see by next year we should have varieties of this kind of uh, exhibition so that we can add value to what we are doing. The chairman of Nigeria Millets Initiative and the SNUPE, His Royal Highness Alaji Yahaya Abubakar, described the celebration as a very significant one as it will assist the various efforts of the federal government aimed at ensuring food security, promoting food production and agricultural activities. The event was an opportunity for many to wind down after the stress of the week, while for some others it was an opportunity to mingle, build relationships and partnerships. In Abuja, Princess Ifi Ajide reporting. 
members of parliament MPs from the 15 ECOWAS countries have been asked to exercise their legislative powers towards creating policies that will enhance sub-regional economic growth to reduce economic dependence in foreign countries. Speaker of the ECOWAS parliament, Dr. C.D. Tunis, made the call at the closing ceremony of the first 2023 parliamentary seminar on sequencing ECOWAS monetary cooperation to a single currency in Guinea-Bissau. Again, Princess Ekwiajide has details. Dr. Tunis, who was represented by the fourth Deputy Speaker Haja Satu Kamara Pinto, stressed that the seminar has revealed strengths and weaknesses, thereby called for regional harmonization to achieve a concrete monetary policy to enable economic growth and integration for infrastructural development. And then the actions that will be required, a, a harmonization of our actions, and also the measure the payment systems. So many topics were discussed. Well, I'll not be able to mention all of them. Earlier in their contributions, some participants, including our former Director General West African Monetary Agency, Professor Mohamed Indiaya, our Nigerian Parliamentarian, Honorable Aline Dome, and the Liberian MP, Honorable Clarence Masakoi, helped on the need to make the ECOWAS payment and settlement system functional to enable it to be beneficial to the masses. According to them, regional bodies must leverage modern technologies so as to eliminate barriers to trade language and unity in the sub-region. The MPs opined that adequate sensitization is key to changing the narrative of barriers posing threats to economic integration across member states. You have Jim Uemoa, is an ATM card that is accepted across Uemoa countries. So that is what we call the payment system. And if it is done in different currencies in uh, multiple countries, what it means is that you need a settlement system. Uh, the settlement could be done uh, through a foreign currency, as we said. Uh, you will transfer your Naira, somebody will receive it in safer. So what will happen in between is that there will be a correspondent bank. Instead of the technology and the information that we find ourselves today helping us, it is rather being used to create or to strengthen this artificial barrier between us. In Abuja, Princess Ewi Ajude reporting. Over now to sports, Roma coach Jose Mourinho has compared Victor Simen to Diede Draba and admits that he will buy him if he was at a club with a lot of money. He, however, had a warning of the Napoleon strike about Premier League life, speaking at a press conference after Roma's 2-1 defeat at the Stadio Maradona, Mourinho was asked about the semen in comparison with a player he worked with at Chelsea Draba. Replying, Mario said Osimen is of the same level as Draba, but Didier didn't dive. He revealed that he also spoke to Osimen about after the match. Our jungle village and indeed the entire Amotbala community in a remote North Council area went to Gog as people from all works of life he gathered for the celebration of a life well lived by the late Mrs. Caroline Wangongwankwa Equator, who died on November 8th, 2022, at the age of 92, and was buried according to her wish. Her funeral ceremony which started with a record mass at St. Andrew's uh, Catholic Church, Amot Balawit family, the clergy, friends and well wishes in attendance was filled with testimonies of service to God and humanity, dedication to family and hard work, virtues of the late Mrs. Nguangwa Equator, popularly known as Long Life, over now to correspondent Kene Chukuchukudi for details. In his homily during the Ripon Mass, Reverend Father Tobias Usigwe reminded Christians that life on earth is for a purpose and all should live consciously without attachment to worldly possessions in order to make heaven. He emphasized that the departed was dedicated to her feet and contributed immensely to the growth of the church. It's a glorious uh, ascension. Our mother lived a life as a warrior of admiration. 
It was so, such a generous woman, so I thank her for the kind of life we live. And I also thank the children who are also turning in the line that the mother of them. One of her sons, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Barrister Patrick Ikweto, remarked that his mother was a treasure to possess whom they will miss dearly, advising those whose mothers are still alive to always commune with them as their presence is not always assured. To advise those who still have their mothers and are alive, it is important that you find time to spend special moments with your mother, with your loved ones, with your family, but when they are gone, you won't see them again. The deceased daughter-in-law, Barista Chinelo Ikweto, and a grandchild, Mr. Onyedika Ikweto, described her as a loving and accommodating woman who lived purposefully. In their remarks, the chief judge of Anambra State, Justice Onochi Anya Achebelo, and a former senator for Anambra Central Senatorial District, Senator Victor Ume, noted that they knew the deceased while she was alive and testified that she was a wonderful and humorous personality who raised God children while also condoling the family. She has gone back to her Mecca. So the family will accept her death as a necessary end and then to um, imitate her life of prayer. She was a woman of uh, uncommon faith in God. The member representing Urumba North at the State House of Assembly, Honorable Emeka Afoka, and the Transition Committee Chairman for Orumba South, Pray Sunday Uchendo, thanked God for the life the deceased lived while praying for the peaceful repose of her soul. Condolence visits as customary to Igbo culture, including dance and music performances, were high points of the funeral ceremony. From Amopala, Orumba North Council area, it's been Kenechuku Chokodi for ABS News. And that's just about it on the news. But before we go, quick reminder that you'll follow ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television Orca. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And now, the main point again. Bishop Ezol for Ovagota Diocese has charged Christians to remain focused in God. Asia M.